Okay, the next event we need to talk about is our Muffins with Moms. That's coming up on Friday. And we have sent out permission forms. In the Wednesday folders. In the Wednesday folders. And I have received to date 115 RSVPs. That means 115 wow. moms are coming. But with 115 moms, I have to double that amount because a child will attend. Parent and the child. Right. Okay. So now I am looking at approximately 230 people attending this event. But. But if every person that attends, all 230, eat two muffins. Two muffins. What did they eat last year? Two muffins. Two. Or three. Two. I three. would. I would say three muffins a person because. Oh. Because, because this size, as wonderful as it is, it's a little bit big. So and it gets get a little bit pricey. Muffins. We're going to get the mini muffins. So how many muffins do we need? So, but we also have to take into consideration that if I say 230, there are going to be several parents that forgot to send in their note or their child forgot to turn it in. Right. So we have to account for we'll sure they right. come. So let's say we're going to have 250 students. Okay. And parents. Total, total. Total people. Total people. And if they eat three muffins each, mm -hmm. how many am I going to need? I don't know. Well, let's talk to our vendors who can give us the old vendor that we've used in the past. It's been great. But we also have that new vendor who might be a little cheaper. Correct. Uh, so you know the price difference? The price difference is... The old or the new? At the first vendor, our original vendor, I can get a package of 12 mini muffins for $3.00. And 74 cents each nice. for 12. My new vendor, I can get 40 muffins, mini muffins, for $7.98. Now, when I start to calculate the price per muffin, I'm looking at 35 cents a muffin as compared to 19 cents per muffin with the newer vendor. That's a big difference per muffin. A big we're difference. We have that many hundreds of muffins. Right. Okay, so we have some conversations to have about. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at about 250 guests, mm -hmm. three muffins. I'm estimating around 750 muffins we're going to need. Wow. That's a, that's a lot of muffins. All right, we've got some work to do. Let's uh, get in touch with the vendors and we'll kind of estimate all this out and see where we go. We'll have a great event on Friday. Okay, sounds good. All right. Leave me hanging. Hey guys, it's Mrs. Cates, and today we're going to be estimating products. So um, I have our notebook out, so I want you to um, model your notes just like I'm doing here. So first, um, let's set up our problem. We're going to um, be talking about a garden today, and our rectangular garden is going to have a width of 24 and 75 hundredths feet and a width of six and seventy-five hundredths feet. Now we are going to be estimating the area of this garden because we are going to need to buy soil and soil typically comes in packages based off of square feet or however much you need. So we know that area equals length times width So I would need to solve 24 and 75 hundredths times 6 and 75 hundredths. Now, since we're estimating, we don't need an actual answer. So I'm going to show you um, some different ways that we can estimate the solution to this multiplication problem. First, let's round each of the values to the nearest tens. So 24 and 75 hundredths would round to 25. 6 and 75 hundredths would round to, wait, <laughs> 20 times 10. 20 times 10, yes. So multiply that together, I would get 200 square feet. Okay, 
So we know we need about 200 square feet, but I think I can get my estimate even more precise. So now let's round 24 and 75 hundredths to the nearest tens again, which would be 20. And now let's make this one more precise and round to the nearest ones. So 6 and 75 hundredths would round to 7. 20 times 7 gets me 140 square feet. OK, that's a good estimate. This is a better estimate, but I think I can get even more precise. So now let's round both of them to the nearest ones, or the nearest whole number. 24 and 75 hundredths would round to 25. 6 and 75 hundredths would round to 7. And 25 times 7 is 175 square feet. Now, all of these are about in the same area, OK? 200, 140, 175. But notice that this was our good estimate, our better estimate, and this is our best estimate. This is our best estimate because our numbers are as close to the original as we can get without getting into the decimals. Okay? Even though this was good, we still had to round pretty far away from our original numbers. So as close as you can get to the original numbers as possible is going to give you your best estimate. Okay, now it's your turn. So on the left side of your notebook, um, I want you to complete these three problems and do your best to give me a good, a better, and a best estimate in each of these three problems.